Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how you doing out there today? Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of The Last Science Show. We are still celebrating Black History Month. If you haven't watched our previous video, go check it out. We talked about a black scientist that truly helped pave the way for many black scientists today. Let's dive in once again and talk about another legend, Percy Julian. African-American chemist Percy Julian was a pioneer in the chemical synthesis of medicinal drugs such as cortisone, steroids, and birth control pills. Percy Julian was a pioneering chemist who was not allowed to attend high school, but went on to earn his PhD. His research at academic and corporate institutions led to the chemical synthesis of drugs to treat glaucoma and arthritis. And although his race presented challenges at every turn, he is regarded as one of the most influential chemists in American history. Percy LaVon Julian was born April 11, 1899 in Montgomery, Alabama, the grandson of former slaves. He attended school through the eighth grade, but there were no high schools open to black students. He applied to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana, where he had to take high school level classes in the evening to get him up to the academic level of his peers. In spite of this challenging beginning, he graduated first in his class with Phi Beta Kappa honors. Woo woo, woo woo. After college, Julian accepted a position as a chemistry instructor at Fisk University. He left in 1923 when he received a scholarship to attend Harvard University to finish his master's degree, though the university would not allow him to pursue his doctorate. He traveled for several years, teaching at black colleges before obtaining his PhD at the University of Vienna in Austria in 1931. With his doctorate in hand, he returned to DePaul to continue his research. In 1935, he earned international acclaim by synthesizing physostigmine from the caliber bean to create a drug treatment for glaucoma. But in spite of his success, the university refused to make him a full professor because of his race. Boo, boo the university. Desiring to leave academia, Julian applied for jobs at prominent chemical companies but was repeatedly rejected when hiring managers discovered that he was black. Ultimately, he obtained a position at Glidden Company as the lab director. There, he invented Aerofoam, a product that uses soy protein to put out oil and gas fires and was widely used in World War II, as well as other soybean-based inventions. Julian continued his biomedical work as well and discovered how to extract sterols from soybean and synthesize the hormones progesterone and testosterone. He was also lauded for his synthesis of cortisone, which became used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Despite his accomplishments as a recognized and published researcher, Percy Julian was denied a faculty position at DePaul. Frustrated in his efforts to gain an academic post, Julian turned to industry. One research job fell through because of a town law forbidding housing of a Negro overnight. Then, in 1936, a door opened when Julian was offered a position as director of research for soya products for Glidden in Chicago. Over the next 18 years, the results of his soybean protein research produced numerous patents and successful products for Glidden. Among them, a paper coating and a fire retardant foam used widely in World War II to extinguish gasoline fires. His biomedical research made it possible to produce large quantities of synthetic progesterone and hydrocortisone at low cost. Julian met his wife, Anna Roselle, while employed at Howard University. They married in 1935 and had two children. In 1950, Julian and his family moved to Oak Park, Illinois. After they purchased their home, but before they moved in, the house was firebombed on Thanksgiving Day. It was attacked again in June 1951. These attacks occurred simply because of the color of Percy's skin. However, Percy did not let the racism and hatred stop him. 
Julian left Glidden in 1953 and established his own laboratory, Julian Laboratories, in 1954. He sold the company in 1961, becoming one of the first black millionaires before founding Julian Research Institute, a nonprofit organization that he ran for the rest of his life. Julian passed away on April 19, 1975, at the age of 76. In 1973, Julian became the first black chemist elected to the National Academy of the Sciences. In 1990, he was elected to the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and in 1989, his synthesis of physostigmine was recognized by the American Chemical Society as one of the top 25 achievements in the history of American chemistry. That's some great information. So I thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Percy Julian, another black scientist who advanced the scientific community. Continue to subscribe, like, and comment for more great videos. We have an awesome video coming up featuring another legend. Hit that bell so you can see it when it drops. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science. The first black scientist we are going to honor is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many inventions, including a number of uses for the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher of the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut, including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. Carver was most likely born in 1864, enslaved in Diamond, Missouri, during the Civil War years. Like many children of the enslaved, uh, the exact year and date of his birth are unknown. Carver was one of many children born to Mary and Giles, an enslaved couple owned by Moses Carver. A week after his birth, Carver was kidnapped along with his sister and mother from the Carver farm by raiders from the neighboring state of Arkansas. The three were later sold in Kentucky. Among them, only the infant Carver was located by an agent of Moses Carver and returned to Missouri. The conclusion of the Civil War in 1865 brought the end of slavery in Missouri. Moses and his wife Susan decided to keep Carver and his brother James at their house after that time. 